Red Zone is here. Today we're going to be talking about the Lakers trade deadline, among many things. For the Lakers, it seems like their main target right now is DeJounte Murray. I do not agree with this decision. I've been against him for many years now. I think he's an inefficient, overrated guard. People have started noticing, but he can't play defense anymore. I don't see how trading D'Angelo Russell for him elevates the team at all. Team, if you just look at the trade market, I don't. I would be shocked if there's much interconference trading among the Western Conference. Maybe the Spurs and somebody do something because they're not the competitive. Maybe the Trailblazers, but if you look at like the top twelve teams, I would be. I don't think there's going to be any trades between them. So that cancels out like half the league right there. And then you look at the East. It's just like. The assets are rough. I mean, Boston has all their money tied up in those top guys. Al Horford might do something for you, but I don't know. Then you have the Bucks. They're trying to package Pat Cunton and Cameron Payne. That's not going to get you anything. The Knicks have some pieces, but they have Grimes. But, like, there's better players out there. And we saw this Lakers team. They made it to the Western Conference Finals. And it does seem like they are figuring things out. They are building. They are clicking. D'Angelo Russell's really been on fire. You always do have the playoff concerns with him. I think this team can really go somewhere. The one trade that I would consider is with the Raptors. I I think a framework of D'Angelo Russell and Rui Hachimura for Dennis Schroeder and Yaka Pertl would do wonders for the Lakers. Because if you look at it, I think Dennis Schroeder has become heavily underrated as a guard. I've At first, I was against him, but in the playoffs last year, he really impressed me. I think just having that defensive presence at the guard with all these explosive guards is extremely valuable. The driving he, he creates is incredible. He gets to the rim so easily. I think if you look at like Bruce Brown versus Dennis Schroeder, the floor for Schroeder is is lower than Brown's, but I think overall as a player, he provides more of an impact. And Jakob Pertl is a great defensive center. He can, I think he would elevate the defense so much. I think it solidifies a lot of things for the Lakers, because when you do have the spacing issue, you could move uh, AD back to the four, then you have LeBron at the three, then you have Jakob at the five, and then you can move Torian Prince to the bench. And you do make a really evened out team. I think could contend. I mean, I that trade is the one that I hope works out. But it does seem like DeJounte Murray is the guy, which does make me sad. But I think if I think the Raptors are the most interesting selling team. Everybody's talking about the Nets. But I think the Raptors overall do have better assets with Schroeder and Jakob. Those guys are actual players who can help you out. I think if the Nets were to attach Cam Thomas, because it's such a small contract to one of their wings, it does become interesting. You do have that Dinwiddie contract that's being thrown around, but at this point, I don't know if he's a positive player. I mean, the inefficiencies are so high. He was a fake three-point shooter for so long. He couldn't shoot. People try to treat him as a shooter, but like people have figured it out. He can't. And I don't think he's helping you out much anymore. Uh, But overall, the trade deadline will be... I'm interested to see how it turns out. We are in a nice place with the league. A lot of parity. So it does make these trades very impactful. I don't think... I I do think the overall movement will be lower than expected. Because if you look at like one... People try to make the Bulls a potential seller, but I don't. That's just a team that's not going to trade really. They do have the whole Zach Levine situation that might pop up, but I'm not sure. You do have the Hornets with Miles Bridges and PJ Washington. Uh, Miles Bridges, I wouldn't touch. All the off the court stuff really taints your team. And PJ Washington, I mean, he's a good defensive wing, but I mean, once the three point shooting is that bad. It's like, how much is he really helping you out? 
I mean, I'm just, I feel like the Mavericks might trade from just because the Grant Williams experience has been rough. But I'm not sure how all that's going to go. For the Hornets also, it's just everybody's hyping up Gordon Hayward, and I don't get it. I've seen, I've seen people say, like, Gordon Hayward can be the best um, buyout player ever. And I don't know where they're getting that from. I mean... Year after year, there's there's at least like one guy on the buyout market who's like it's really shocking. I just don't think Hayward's up to that tier. I mean, he has all the injury stuff. Plus, the he started off the year kind of nice, but the efficiency is just rough. He's old. I've seen people want him to go to the Thunder or like Timberwolves, and I just don't think that's gonna work out. I mean, for the Thunder stuff, I just don't get because I think. That's a team that just needs to stick. I mean, I talked about last episode about how they need to move off Giddy, but I do think, I do think Giddy has become kind of underrated. But that's part of the way we evaluate players. It's just, it's ever, it's always changing. But I do think the overall energy Giddy brings and the playmaking he provides has immense value to that Thunder team. And they're just, they have a special feeling right now. The Thunder. I mean, every game is so exciting for them. They've really figured it out on both ends. I, that's a team I wouldn't touch. I would just leave it all alone, take it to the postseason, see what happens, and then evaluate your team from there because they're in such a perfect spot. If they don't win a championship in the next five years, I would be shocked. That team has become immensely enjoyable. And Timberwolves for the Western Conference, they've started to slip, which has been tough to see, but I don't know. They do have the Kyle Anderson contract, but I just think the finances for that team are so rough that they're not going to take on any long-term money. So I could see them staying pat. That's a team I'm in. I hope, I hope Mike Conley can stay healthy. I hope Jaden McDaniels can stay healthy because them in the postseason is going to be really fascinating. I mean, the Suns do have a chance of getting one of those lower seats, and it's going to be the playoffs for the West is just, are just going to be incredible. Um, yesterday the All Star starters were announced. Damian Lillard. I don't, I don't get that. I mean, a lot of people had him as like a wild card pick. They didn't know if he was going to get in. And I don't think he should have started. I think Jalen Brunson. He's been having a fantastic season. Trey Young has become so underrated. I mean, initially I wasn't part of the Trey Young hive. But, I mean, he's just such a great player who fuels your offense to such a high degree. I think Tyrese Maxey's cooled down, so I'm fine with him not starting. But I think Jalen Brunson not having it. I mean, I just think Brunson's having a real moment. And overall, overall, I do think Dame's overrated as a player. I don't know. He's so small. So I think in the playoffs, we've seen the impact become limited. I'm part of the Kyrie over Dame club. I am. I... I agreed with the Western Conference starters. I thought those were pretty good. You could have gone AD over Kevin Durant, but Kevin Durant has been really exceptional. I mean, I know LeBron has to start him cool with it, but Kawhi over this past month or two, the Clippers are overall, I mean, they are legit championship contenders. The way they are playing off each other has been really beautiful to see. It seems like, we say it every year, they look good, that an injury could happen, but I really do. I, I'm i rooting for them. If they win the championship, I just think that would re- really be perfect. I mean, a lot of that really changes, I think, the NBA a lot overall in terms of a legacy standpoint, a narrative standpoint for all those guys. I mean, I'm not a Westbrook fan, but I was watching that Clippers versus Lakers game where he hit the three with one shoe, and I just, I was really impressed with the energy he was bringing driving. I mean, I think overall, if he's playing more than 20 minutes, he's a negative. But in this limited energy role, he's been really great. Him and Norman Powell. Norman Powell so, has been such a great scorer for so long. He's gone under, uh, who's gone under the radar. But the Clippers winning the championship would make me happy. Harden just having Harden having a good 16 games in the playoffs. I mean, that would be great to see. But circling back to the playoffs... We've seen I've been seeing a Paolo Banchero 
versus Scotty Barnes debate occurring frequently, and I just don't, I don't understand the pro Palo side. I mean, I kind of got initially, but like, call me a true shooting merchant. I, I just think if you have a negative true shooting percentage, it's hard for you to believe you should be an all-star. And especially the people are living in the headspace of a month ago with the magic, but they've really, they've fallen off a bit. They're kind of in the middle. I think that's happening with a lot of Eastern Conference teams, though the perception of them is just kind of odd. But I just don't agree with Palos and All-Star. I think Scotty is so easily better. I mean, I saw a side-by-side -side comparison today, and it was like Scotty with a 4.4 .4 box plus minus. Like Paolo with a, like only 0.4. And I know those numbers don't sound like anything, but like a 4.4 .4 is so... So huge on that scale. I just think Scotty Barnes is such an another world as a player. I'm I'm a big fan of his. I, he's just flown under the radar with the Raptors training Siakam. Everybody just sees them as a rebuilding team. And the record isn't that good. But the way Scotty's been performing de deserves a lot of recognition and praise. I've just I wasn't high on him last year due to the inefficiencies, but he's really figured it out. And the way he's been able to hold up, I mean, I I, don't, I haven't seen, like, much most improved player. There, there's been less awards chatter than I've expected this season. Maybe I'm out of the loop, but I feel like once we hit this point in the season, usually within the NBA, we do have the leaders for separate individual awards. Uh, but now, I don't know. I feel like it's all open. I do think the 65-game minimum has kind of screwed up with the discussion. I think that's really hurt it overall. I mean, I really hate that requirement. I just think it's done. We've seen now it's like Kyrie isn't eligible miss, just because he's missing games. And it's, just, it's not a great implication. We're going to go to the all-NBA team selection season, and it's going to be that third team is going to be awful. It's not going to be if this minimum lasts for more than like sixty-five game for more than um two more seasons. I, I would be shocked. I, there's no way it doesn't go away soon. I mean, especially if Kawhi ends up missing some games, but still has like such a great efficient season and misses season misses like all NBA. That would cause an outrage. And I just think if you're tying, I'm not a fan at all of tying your contracts to all NBA. Just because all NBA. It's just some media voters getting together. It's so narrative-based. National TV games, those appearances affect so much. And basing it, you're basing like tens of millions of dollars on these people voting. And we see them on TV every night. And they just aren't that smart. Like Kendrick Perkins has a vote. Uh, we, we watch this NBA halftime show. We all watch it on mute. Nobody's watching that with volume. And it just annoys me. How the stakes for those votes are so high. When you just see a title, it has such a prestige to it. But we know who's voting for this. It's not the Oscars where it's like cool actors and directors. It's just like these media people who are like 60 years old. Who don't watch that many games. I just think... And that's just a whole other discussion. But I just think the system for that is so fake. But circling back to most improved player... I, I know the Rockets fans are going to push that singing agenda. But I think I want to shut that down immediately. I'm so I, I'm so against him. I'm not buying that stock at all. Whoever has that stock right now, just sell, sell, sell. Every clip, I, I see these Rockets fans hyping him up like a young Jokic. Then I watch the clips. I, he has no aura at all. He can't move. He's really, I don't want to body shame, but he's kind of chubby. He's not, he's not that athletic. We don't know that. I, I just think because of the Jokic success, we started devaluing defense among centers if they have offensive skills. But if you're not the greatest, if you're not one of the 10 greatest offensive players in NBA history, then as a center, you got to defend. I mean, people try to hype up Sabonis. He's a beneficiary of that, but he, I'm not a fan of his. And singing, I just don't get that. If he wins that award, I would be so mad. I see Rockets fans trying to build around him like he's some star. I just think that's so fake. I mean, people, they're going to be mad if he doesn't get an all-star thing. But look out West. Like, Chad is 10 times the player. You add, you swap out, you add Singen 
the Thunder instead of Chet, and the team is like the fifth seed. I I just don't. I just don't think he's that good of a player. But all the All Star game will be will be pretty interesting. I think the league is just so crowded. That there's gonna be some snubs. Like I do. I do hope that all three Clippers guys do make it. I think all are having incredible seasons. I do think there's a certain section of the NBA voting community who does have their biases and narratives against Harden. We've all seen the ballet sports guy going as anti-Harden rant. I do think the 76ers situation will sour people on Harden, the voting bodies, but I I think he deserves the votes. The way we've seen him time and time again be thrown into these offenses and just absolutely elevate them. I mean, he's so portable. We've seen, He's the definition of portability. So many people question that just because he had the ball so much, but he's been just, he elevated the 76ers offense so much. He's elevated the Clippers offense so much. It makes me so sad the way people don't see that just because of these off-court issues. I mean, the way he's done for the Clippers is incredible. Paul George, he's having a great season. Kawhi, they all deserve it. I don't think the Clippers have the perception around the league where they can get three starters, but if you look at three all-stars, but if you look at what they've done recently, I, I think they easily deserve it. I mean, I I love that team. I mean, you have like Laurie, Mar- Laurie Markinen. Who I think will probably get snubbed, but I mean he's having a great season. But he should be like, if there's injury stuff, I do think he'll get in. I've seen some people not having Devin Booker on their All Star list. I don't get that at all. I think he's one of the ten best guys. I think he's he's gotten to the point as a player where it's like, what are the weak? He's elevated his passing game so much. He's not that much of a negative on defense anymore. He does have the three-point shooting issue. Once you get to that caliber of star, we see with LeBron and Luka, and your three-point shooting, it doesn't really matter that much since it's more of an off-ball skill. The creation does matter, obviously, but it's more of a that's more of a portability off-ball thing. And not, not having Devin Booker on balance, that's just crazy to me. He... The Suns as a whole, I think, are really figuring it out. The season Kevin Durant has had has just been has just been incredible. I mean, there's so many nights where he's just been alone, and he just totally takes the team and just leads them. I mean, we saw that game winner recently, which was so impressive. I'm very interested to see how the Suns do. I've seen they they're trying to package Nasir a little in the second rounder to see if that gets something. I don't I don't think it will. I mean, they might I think they're going to try to make a trade. But if you just look, their main trading chip is Grayson Allen. And Grayson Allen has been so good this season. He's been better than Bradley Beal this season. He's been so incredible. The his splits are amazing. He's he's been so reli- I mean, he's been so reliable for them. He's I thought he was so good with the Bucks. He's so good with the Suns. I know he has the attitude issues, and the overall reputation for him is pretty rough, but he's a valuable player. I think that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day. The NBA is in a very interesting and exciting place. I'm excited to follow the rest of this season. I hope you continue listening. Just... Thank you. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.